Hello friends, hello photographers, welcome to this video. Um, this is about my Canon EOS R5 and how I set up the uh, buttons on the camera. I recorded a similar video with, uh, or maybe almost exactly the same kind of video with uh, the Canon EOS R. I had that camera for um, about a year and a half or since the, the camera came out. And um, I think I have a pretty cool way of setting up the buttons and uh, how to switch between different modes on the camera that many people don't think about. And um, I know this because every time I am on a workshop or I travel somewhere and I meet other photographers and I show them how I did my uh, setup on the camera, they're always like, uh, wow, you know, everyone like it and they didn't even think about that this was possible. So. If you have the EOS R, uh, check that video, but this is about the R5. So I will try to make this video a little bit shorter than the other one. The other one turned out like 30 minutes. I hope this one will be uh, shorter than that. So I'll try to do it uh, quick. Um, the biggest difference in how to set up this camera compared to the EOS R is that the R5 have a lot more buttons available. And uh, the other thing is in the firmware also, or in the software in the camera, there's a lot of more options available, you know, for what functions you can choose for what button. Um, on on the uh, EOS R, it's kind of limited, and it feels like it's just a software thing, but I don't know why they uh, did it like that. So here it's better. So first off, I will go through the whole menu and just say how I put things here, and then we will go to the... Uh, last uh, thing with the custom uh, buttons but i will try to do this quick here so image quality of course i always use raw this uh, other here c raw i think that's compressed and i never use that so raw that's the first thing next thing that you should do is go and check the iso speed settings because here in the iso speed range and by default this one is set to 100 like the lowest iso but if you go for this uh, l or that is like the same as iso 50 and now you can put your camera to ISO 50 if you need that some, uh, sometimes. If you're shooting with flash or if you uh, want to shoot a really short depth of field when it's really sunny and use a big aperture. So that's quite good. You can change that. Then um, I'm just, I have to go and check uh, through all the things here. Um, next here, picture style. No, no, no. Uh, I leave it on sRGB. I could put it on Adobe RGB, but that only matters if you shoot JPEGs, and I never shoot JPEGs, so it doesn't matter. Um, here I, I switch off this uh, high ISO uh, speed noise reduction. That is uh, for JPEGs also, so it doesn't matter on the RAWs, but when you are looking uh, in the camera, you see the JPEG, and if you have noise reduction on, they can sometimes look quite soft and you don't see the real noise that is there. It's better to switch it off and I would rather like to see the real noise that I then would get on my raw file. So that's why I do like that. Uh, mm -mm. I have to go through everything here and check this. I don't know about this shutter mode, electronic first curtain. It was just how the camera was set when I got it. I didn't uh, check anything about that yet, what the difference is have some options here like uh, electronic I know but what is the difference between mechanical and electronic first curtain I know what the difference is but wh why you know <laughs> what is the advantage interesting here is this image review I always switch it off and image review is like if you uh, see the photo just right after you take it you know if it shows up on the screen or something and I think that is kind of I don't like it you know it's pointless to have that show up every time you shoot a picture especially when you saw it just before expo simulation enable of course uh, but here you have to go and choose disable if you shoot with studio flash otherwise you cannot see anything in the viewfinder so that's important and it's important to remember where that is number seven in the red menu Shooting info, uh, shooting info display here is like, uh, 
I switch off everything except I have this window on where I have all the information, the histogram and all shit. And then I have this where it's just nothing. And I can switch between these two. I have everything or nothing. Nothing is what I like to have when I'm shooting. If I need to check something, I can go for the mode that show me exactly everything. Uh, here I use the grid here because I think it's easier to um, do composition, especially when you have the eye tracking autofocus. Uh, the camera is focusing so well on its own that you like forget to check about the composition sometimes when you get really into the shoot and the lines there, they really uh, help me. Next here is, uh, I don't remember what this is. Yeah, that's nothing nothing interesting here uh, I changed it was on power saving when I got the camera and I changed it for smooth and I think smooth is the 120 frames per second because the viewfinder is much much smoother now when you're moving the camera fast it's not only for fast shooting uh, fast moving subjects but it's also it feels more natural when you move the camera fast it will take just a little bit more battery so I say it's absolutely worth it here, um, this will be will assigned to button anyway. Here, uh, people, I shoot mostly people, so I have that like a priority. This one I have disabled because um, it is disabled by default, but continuous AF means the camera is focusing without you uh, focusing, you know? You don't even need to push the button. And that's weird because the camera focuses just you have it in your hand, you know? Focus on the ground or something. Here uh, I use the touch and drag. This means, if you don't know it already, that uh, you can have the display as a joystick. You know, When you look in the viewfinder and the display is dark, you can move around your finger on the display to move your focus point. And I always put it on, uh, on the left side because I look in the camera with my left eye and my nose touches on the right side because of that and if i have the right side to move me with my right thumb uh, i do nose focus which is really disturbing um yeah this af uh, method here uh, you see i have just three of them activated and this one you can deactivate also spot uh, but i have it activated for one reason and i will um, tell you more about this later um I can tell you now actually because the the one point the normal one it is really big you know this point is really big and um, if I could I would deactivate it but they don't let me deactivate it I think this one is better it's slightly smaller and it's easier to choose what you want to focus on this one you just focus on the area is too big you know you can't focus with precision here I just leave it here I leave it uh, here is like the one shot. I've put it to focus priority and not release priority. It means the camera will be completely in focus before it releases the shutter. But I'm using mostly uh, tracking anyway or servo, so it doesn't matter so much. Um, here is the really interesting thing now. Limit AF methods. Here I said we can deactivate this if we want and have only these other two available, but I have these three. And why don't I have the others on? because I have assigned a button that can switch between the AF methods here with a single click. So this means I'm in eye tracking, for example, I shoot a portrait uh, and then the model turn the face to the side and all of a sudden, let's say the camera can't find the face or can't find the eye and start to focus on the shoulder or some weird place. I can just click one button and I go for manually selecting a focus point and I can put my thumb on the display or use the joystick and just slide it to where I want it to be and click a shot. And then when the model turn the face back again, I can put the eye tracking on. It sounds complicated <laughs> when I tell this, but this is just like, it's just happening it's so fast. You know, I do it so quick. So nothing to really think about. This here is uh, was made more sense on DSLR because now we use mostly eye tracking anyway, um, but still I choose the second option, which uh, move my manually selected focus point back to the last one that I used when I'm holding the Canon camera vertical or when I'm holding the camera horizontal. Maybe 
I mean, if you switch on, maybe my explanation was bad, but if you switch on this mode, you will see what I'm talking about, and it's pretty good. I like that. Here I don't use uh, change anything, change nothing, nothing, nothing. Um, <clears throat> I switched the wheels for the reason that it matches better with my EOS R. You know, if I'm viewing the photo, I can do with my index finger here to zoom in and out. And that is the same thing as the EOS R does. But I would rather like to change on the EOS R, but it is not possible on that camera. So I had to change on this one just so both my cameras are the same, you know, because it's really hard. Otherwise, when you switch between the cameras and, and um, you start to you flip ten, 10 photos instead of just zooming in and out of the picture that you you're looking at. And that's what you wanted to do, you know, so kind of weird um, here. Magnification. Uh, it's really nice that you, with a one click, you zoom in to the actual size of the 100% of the photo, not 200%, you know, because if you go 200%, it will not look sharp anymore and weird. And I think uh, actual size is better. And from selected point, it means if I focus on the face of the model and I zoom in, it go to the face. And Usually where you focus is where you want to see, you know, so I can just click uh, one time and I go in and see a close up of the face. I can see if it's good. The eyes are good. No weird expression. And then I can just click and go out again. And I will show you on which buttons I put this. There's also a default button that have the zoom uh, by default. You know, uh, I have to check here. Nothing I use here. This I don't use. Um, here, uh, it's really good to change for the second option here, because then the photo will not rotate on the camera, but it will rotate on the computer. And it means like when you're shooting um, vertical, you will the photo will cover the whole uh, display and you can see the photo bigger. Otherwise, you will have two big black uh, areas on the side and you see the photo much, much smaller. Um, Power, yeah, now I had to switch it off when I'm making a video because the camera went to sleep when I was talking. Uh, but usually I have the shortest time available, you know, auto power one minute and display or something like that all to one minute. Just because if I, you know, forget to switch off the camera, uh, it will not s just lay in the bag and drain my battery. The beep, I never use. I think it's disturbing to listen to the beep every time you focus. Screen brightness. I always put it to five. I did that on all my 5Ds and I do it the same here. I think five is a good brightness level because it is uh, bright, but it's not too bright, you know? So I like this to have the screen kind of bright, but not over uh, bright. I would just wanna, yeah, it's nice to see it outside in the sunlight. You find the brightness. Before I was with this on, on number five, um, but I realized it made me underexpose my photos a little bit too much. So I switched back to four. And also for some weird reason, when the viewfinder is dark, the camera also have harder to find focus. So the focus and the exposure is connected. So it's why um, it's better to have, actually, I don't know what I'm saying right now. <laughs> yeah. That has nothing to do with that, but the focus and the brightness and the exposure, they are connected, but I don't know why uh, the viewfinder uh, uh, brightness. I had it on five before, but it caused my photos to be really underexposed. Uh, this I don't change. I don't change this. Um, Self-cleaning. Um, I put that on auto cleaning at power off. Why not a power on? Because if you have enable, I think it's uh, when when you switch it on also, but I, I was thinking that it takes a millisecond and you really want the camera to be ready right away. So here, uh, one interesting thing here that I'm using is actually the custom modes. I did one uh, custom mode for myself with my studio setting and normally it's not a special thing to do, you know, but on this camera, 
if you want to shoot in studio, first you have to, my, my typical studio setting would be ISO 100, aperture 8, and 160 of a second, and uh, manual white balance 5700 Kelvin, and then I need to go and do this. I need to go to the red menu, to number 7, that I mentioned before, uh, uh, not this, uh, here, and exposure simulation, disable. And uh, what happened when I uh, didn't have the uh, custom um, mode was that I forgot to switch it on after I was shooting studio I forgot to switch on to see the exposure in the viewfinder and I was I just thought that after that I was shooting and I thought the exposure was fine and my photos came out weird if you're using the custom mode C1 to C3 uh, you can put this on the custom mode so when you go here and choose C1 for example I will have my studio settings or my uh, whatever settings and when I switch back to M or AV again it will go back to exactly the settings that I had just before so if I go to C1 I'm studio and then I go back to M or AV and the uh, viewfinder exposure simulation will go back to normal to enable you know so that's to use the custom um, mode you just put the settings you want in the camera like your studio settings for example like I just said uh, and then you go here and you choose register settings and you register and the camera will register everything how it's set up right now focus method white balance uh, everything and then when you switch back again you just like reset the settings to where you were which is kind of cool on the mirrorless camera on a normal DSLR that don't make so much sense not in the same way because because of the viewfinder thing here and if you do like this you never forget to switch it back on again here I don't touch anything here's the custom uh, setup the, the orange or brown or whatever this color is I always call it brown but maybe it's orange um, so I don't touch anything here except here customize button customize dials and dials we have these there are not so many of them um, the control ring uh, I don't like so much this control ring thing so I, that's why I put this kind of function that I rarely use I put there I put white balance and this means I, I can change between the fixed white balance modes you know like uh, um, if I show can I show you now if I do like this and I ah, I don't have the control ring on this lens that's also a, a problem you know I don't have the control ring on this lens, but I'm switching between, uh, here they are, between these. And I do that on the control ring because I rarely switch. Usually I'm just on Kelvin. Um, so I put that on the control ring for the reason that all my lenses don't have the control ring. Um, yeah, and I said I'm mostly in the uh, oh, by the way, this small arrow next to the white balance means I need to hold the focus button and s turn the ring. So I don't turn the ring, the control ring, or and change the setting by mistake. If I turn the control ring without holding the focus button uh, or the shutter button half pressed, it doesn't change anything. So that's a safety thing, and I think it's good to have this safety there. Um, if I put this control ring uh, change here to K to Kelvin, I can change the color temperature directly on this wheel here on the back. Just by turning the wheel, I change the color temperature, and I see inside the viewfinder uh, which color temperature I'm on, and I also see the change, of course, on the picture in the viewfinder, which is really nice. But it's because I just, maybe it's me, but I always use manual white balance, and I think it's cool to have it easy uh, access. Another thing is, I don't want to put something important on this wheel, like ISO or something, because if I touch the wheel by mistake, which is kind of easy to do because it's like on the back of the camera and it's pointing out a lot, I change some important setting. But if I change something here, I just change the Kelvin, the color temperature, and that's easy, I can correct it after. If I would change ISO or something, I can't change it after. The photo will be destroyed. Maybe. <laughs> 
Uh, here is the interesting uh, part now. Um, the shutter button, uh, the trigger, the, um, I'm focusing on the shutter button. Nothing weird. I don't like back button focus. On the mode dial, it's the mode. On the AF on, the back button focus button, I have this mode. I'm switching between one shot and servo by just clicking that button. I don't need to hold it or anything, I just click one time and it switches. Because I use servo mode almost all the time, but then all of a sudden you want to switch for the other mode and then I can do that with a button without opening any menu or doing anything. I talked a little bit about ISO before, so here it is. I assigned ISO to this star button and the same thing here. I need to hold the button and scroll the wheel on my index finger to change the ISO. And I can do that without taking my eye from the viewfinder, which is really, really nice. Um, by the way, I'm not going to go through any of the video settings because I don't shoot video. So I'm not, that's not my thing. Uh, the video settings, they are just default, you know. Okay, next one. Uh, here we have on this button, uh, the one next to the star button, I put the drive mode because it's also easy to access button. You can feel it without, uh, without, you know, need to look at the button. You just feel it and you can change the drive mode so you can shoot a burst or you can change it back to a single shot picture. And I don't use that so often, but sometimes you really, yeah, yeah, now I want to do a, a, a burst right now, not in 10 seconds. And then you just hold the button and change the setting. You don't have to go in the menu or anything. On the 5Ds, they always had a special button for this, but here on this camera by default, I think they had five functions on one button, which I think was weird because there are enough buttons to customize. So you don't need to put that many functions on one button. Next one is this depth of field uh, preview and I never use depth of field preview. I, I never did it. Um, so I don't use it. And here I put instead a uh, picture style so I can, for example, change if I want to shoot black and white, I change the camera to black and white and I see my picture and the viewfinder in black and white. So it's easy to access and I, I choose it to put it on that wheel uh, instead of from the beginning I had drive mode there, but I thought it is easier to access the other button the, uh, next to my thumb next to the star button for, for the drive mode because it's faster to change it. And of course I put the ISO also on the best button, the e easiest to find because ISO you change more often, often than picture style and much more than drive mode. Uh, on the lens I don't change the button, but you can. But I think it would be weird to have some other function than manual focus on the lens button. This is interesting. My most interesting thing I would say. On the MFN button, it is the small button next to my index finger, next to this wheel, next to the shutter button, where you always have your finger. There I switch between the AF methods and that would be uh, the AF methods that I selected somewhere here. So here I have three. AF methods. I would like to have two. Like I said, I have that on the ESR. I switch just between uh, this one and the small uh, point. But here you can't remove the standard, the big square. So I need three. But it's kind—it's of, just one click uh, to change it. And I have it next to the shutter button. So every time I just need to switch between face tracking and face tracking and the, the manually select the AF point, I do that with a click on one button exactly where my finger always rests. So it's super, super quick, super easy. And I would say that is the best thing in this video because that's something that people didn't think about because first you need to go and limit the AF methods and then you need to assign this function to a button where you switch between the AF methods. But for me, it's perfect. Also, when, uh, for example, you have the uh, eye focus or face detection on and the camera thinks something else is the face and start to focus there. And you have a thing in the camera where you can help out and point it where to go. 
but I found it also working pretty good if you just disable the eye focus and switch it on again. And then it finds the eye and the face right away, usually. So that's why I can I use this also if I'm, I'm shooting with the, like I said, with the eye tracking and it loses it. You can just switch off, switch on, and then it's back working good again. Um, I think, yeah, last thing, uh, last two things here, uh, the joystick. For some reason, this one is off, and I don't know why, because <laughs> uh, you change for this mode, you can change the AF point directly without having to push one button first and then change the AF point. And I really like the joystick, even if I use the touch and drag focus, because with, with the touch and drag focus, the point move really, really quick. But if you just want to move it like one click to the side, it is almost impossible to do with the touch and drag. But if you use the joystick, you can just move one, two clicks up or down or to the side exactly where you want the point without um, uh, having to push another button first. And the next thing here, the camera have a magnifying um, button here on the back that you can't change, that you zoom in to the photo. But I like to put it here on the wheel because on the set button on the wheel because if you are looking at the photos you always scroll this wheel because that's where you put next picture next picture and you already have your thumb on the wheel you just push the button in the middle of the wheel and you go in 100 percent push the button again and you go out and you can continue to scroll you don't need to change the grip or try to reach for another button because honestly the zoom button is kind of far away and you have to like move your hand in an with an odd movement and I don't like that. So yeah, kind of simple, but still a lot of things that I think that many people didn't think about or get the idea to put it like this. That's why I wanted to share this video with you. And if you like it, let me know, leave a comment, uh, like, of course, and Check out my Instagram. I have the link in the description. I have a lot of uh, uh, yeah, stuff there, almost daily posts. That's where I'm the most active. And I also put a link to my website. On my website, you can like sign up for my newsletter and you will get information about workshops, about other things, about my travel. And also, if you're curious about my edit and my post production, you can fi also find it on my website under uh, video tutorials. and. I also have presets and at the moment I have just presets for Capture One, but they are pretty awesome even if you're not a Capture One user. And I also provide an easy uh, to understand video where I show how you apply the presets and how you go and adjust. And even if you're new to Capture One, I promise you that you can use them and get really cool results on your photos. That was it. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.